Well, Jeff, today we're talking about the disciple whom Jesus loved. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And and all of that, but like this is sort of the book of love, the right? Book of love. Love and light. Who wrote the book of love? <laughs> you know that one? No. Yes, you do. I don't. Uh it's a fifty song. I don't know it. Oh, I wonder, wonder who, but who who wrote the book of love? I don't know it. Okay, well, wow, I'm just That's, all by myself. Man, hopefully but, but there's some older listeners out there that say, resonate with me. What a good singer! What a good <laughs> singer! That was worth it, right there. Just tuning in. <laughs> thank for you, that, thank you. That piece. You know, if I if I could, I could record all three of those harmony parts and then play it. That'd be kind of yeah, cool. Hey, and if the ministry doesn't work out for you, maybe you could be like a lounge singer no, doing. I am terrible doing callbacks. I couldn't, on 50 I couldn't songs. even sing "Hey Jude" yesterday. <laughs> It's two days in a row, though. You're in a singing mood. Yeah, I guess so. So, uh, so anyways, uh, I'm not sure where that's going to go, but he's Jeff, and I'm Chris, and we're the Bible Guys. <laughs> okay, Chris. So, yes. Uh, um, you oh, know, that's right. We're doing a segment. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, in the past, we, you have done some big challenges on me of... Bible verses or or song lyrics and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I just found out a moment ago that I have to figure out this. And you know what? Actually, I feel the pressure way more than a movie quote. I know. I know. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. This is hard. Yeah. So uh, here's the one. Now, I know that what you would prefer is, um, you know, that we do movie quotes or something like that. Or uh, what's your favorite girl singer? Who's my favorite girl singer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably... Carrie Taylor Underwood, Swift, but um, I, but I like Taylor you're Swift. T- you're Swifty. Yeah, he, yeah she's yeah. a legend, man. Yeah. So um, you'd prefer that, but uh, sorry, this is gonna be your other favorite singer, Justin Bieber. So it's either oh, whatever. <laughs> either <laughs> either hey, just, Justin Bieber has some killer songs. I'm sure he does. Justin Bieber lyrics or verses from the Book of Jeremiah. <laughs> from Jeremiah. <laughs> Oh, the weeping prophet. <laughs> That's right. So, so you have to decide. I'm going to read you a phrase. Oh no! Okay. And it's either from the Book of Jeremiah okay. or from uh, Justin Bieber lyric. Okay. My explanation on my sheet, by the way, my show sheet uh-huh. did not say Jeremiah. It just said Bible. <laughs> okay. So, Book of Jeremiah. Okay. All right. So here's the first lyric. Uh, I, well, it might be a lyric or a verse. I shouldn't have said that. I called you, but you did not answer. Oh, that that sounds like. Uh psalm actually but i called you but you did not answer that has to be that has to be a bible verse i can't imagine that wait a minute i called you but you did not the did not gives it away i think it's a bible verse okay it is it's jeremiah jeremiah 17 7 13 i can't imagine bieber be like and then you did not answer he'd be he'd be like didn't (laughs) <laughs> okay it feels like i'm missing a blessing feels like yeah the feels gives it away i think that's a lyric well you gotta say jeremiah or justin bieber oh uh bieber okay bieber you're correct all that matters okay i'm freeing you from the chains on your wrists now that could be either but that's a little heavy Freeing you from the chains on your wrists. That, uh, that the only way that could be a Bieber lyric is if he was literally writing about his salvation. Yeah, because he has a lot of songs that way. Or or breaking up with Selena Gomez. He would never. He wouldn't use chains on wrists. I don't know. Freeing you from your chains on your wrists. I'm gonna say Bieber. It's Jeremiah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. Jeremiah 44. Really? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm freeing you from your uh, chains on your wrists. Daggummit, I was fooled. Ask you to forgive me for my sins, or would you please? <laughs> <laughs> well, the giveaway is the, oh, would you please? Yeah. Oh, would you please? Oh, wait a minute. Mm. I think I know this song. We sang this song at church. Oh. Uh, is, this from, is this from Bieber's song Purpose? Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You give me purpose. <laughs> That's a great song. That's a phenomenal song. We sang this at church. <clears throat> Praying for a miracle, who will show you grace? Praying for a miracle. 
praying for a miracle. Who will show you? That has to be Jeremiah. It's Justin Bieber. Oh, come on. <laughs> Life is worth living. <laughs> so well, hey, you I'm were three th- out of five. I'm three out of five. Hey, a 60, that's almost a passing. Is a 60 a D minus? <laughs> huh? Thanks, D, buddy. D is for diploma. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, that, you know what? Picking picking Bieber was 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 that was clever. Yeah, it was cruel. Actually, thank, no. I just want to thank Desiree. Uh, that just delighted yes. me today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because it wasn't you yeah, in the I know, hot seat. I know. That's, it's yeah. hard, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And you're thinking because the last time I did it, I only got two out of five. Okay. And I'm like, I I, I thought they were going to revoke my Bible guys card. <laughs> They're going to remove my license. I'm going to lose my license. That's okay. okay. So we are in First John, which is, by the way, one of my favorite books in the Bible. Yeah. Oh, I love the book of First John. And uh, I like John's writing in general. If you are new to the podcast, if you're new to the Bible, find the Gospel of John and read the Gospel of John. That it, John just tells the story of Jesus in a way that is uh, so beautiful and uh, so much uh, so much detail and passion and love for Jesus. It's just fantastic. But so first, John, it, he's it, coming at it. Yeah. So, hey, so real quick, this was before John, most likely, was banished uh, to the Isle of Patmos. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is, however, John's an old man. So yes. it's written somewhere around, um, uh, what does it say 85. here? 85 or 90 AD. Mm-hmm. So it's significantly, uh, you know, later than the Jude we talked about yesterday. And uh, so, so here's John, one of the original 12 disciples. He is actually writing probably most likely to an, an entirely new generation who have not seen Jesus in person. He obviously has. And he is the same disciple whom Jesus loved. Yeah. He's the, the apostle John. And uh, most likely he was writing, writing from the city of Ephesus. And uh, so there you go. And you can kind of hear the, um, the age and the wisdom yes. and, the, and the love for his people in, in his writing. And he's probably the last living apostle at this point. Yes. Right, right, yes. which is kind of neat. Yeah. So anyways, let's just dive in. I think you're going to like this book today. And uh, we're going to stay here for the next couple of days. It says, we proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the father and then he was revealed to us. We, we proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We're not practicing the truth. But if we're living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. My dear children, I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and only for our sins, but the sins of the, all the world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. And that is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. So we ended up there in uh, the second chapter, verse 6. Hey, uh, I have a confession to make. I'm just glad that he doesn't talk about false teachers again. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. They, they've been going at it here for a while, haven't yeah, they? I mean, yeah, I mean, it seems like, to be honest with you, when you sort of walk through the book, if you're a longtime listener of the Bible, guys, yeah. you start to realize, hey, there's a lot of scripture that talks about yep. false teaching because, after all, it was sort of the beginning of yeah. the movement of the church, mm-hmm. and uh, and there were there were people springing up all over the place, and so they wanted to, you know, set the course on the you know, on the right way. 
But anyway. you know, I, I think it's possible. One of the reasons why I think that there's so many false teachers is one, Satan hates what God's doing. And so Satan will, ra- you know, he loves to twist what God says. Mm. Uh, right. And, and so that's one reason. The other reason is I think that some people have a fascination with being mystical and clever. Mm. And I think that there are a lot of Bible teachers that they learn a little bit. You know, Paul warns us, he said, a little bit of knowledge puffs us up, right? We, we get super prideful. And I think it's possible to be clever and not be wise, Yeah. right? And, and so we can get sucked into, oh, you know, uh, how often? You and I plan Easter services and Christmas services, and it's tempting to try to figure out how to make this year's Easter be even more amazing than last Easter, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Bible teachers, people who are public t- speakers— People who are getting their their income or their living, or it, it maybe in the, that day getting their strokes for being so smart and so intelligent with the Bible. Sometimes we are tempted to be clever rather than just being clear and true. And so it's easy to start twisting Scripture yeah. or or making leaps from one thing to another and trying to tie things together that aren't connected. And so they have to warn against that at the beginning because the Scriptures weren't completely written out yet. You're right, right. Okay, so sorry about that tangent. I loved it. Um, so, uh, it, first of all, John, his writing is recognizable, isn't it? Yes. So he uses sort of the same yep. patterns that he did with the gospel. <laughs> yep, yep. He uses simple words, which I love. Yeah, me he, too. He uses bright, uh, like, contrasts. Yep. And, uh, and at the beginning, he introduces the book of John, or first John, excuse me, the same way that he introduces the book of John. Yes. Because he talks about the word. Yep. Uh, capital W, he calls Jesus the word of life. So immediately the first thing that he does yeah. is he talks about Jesus's deity yeah. with God, the father, and that he is the one right. and, uh, and, and he is eternal. Yeah. So well, I John, that. John one, one, the gospel of John one, one in the beginning was the word, the oh, word was with yeah. God and the word was God. And then Correct. he goes on and says, nothing was created without him. Right. And then this one says, we proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we've heard and seen. And then he goes on and he said, he is the word of life. And this is the one who is life itself revealed to us. And he goes, and we've seen him. And that's how he starts off the book of John too. Yeah, I love it. You're exactly right. I don't even know if that I noticed that. I'm, yeah, I'm and the, isn't that cool? It. Yeah, yeah. And then he uses, uh, immediately he says, God is light and in him there is no darkness. And, you know, <clears throat> as teachers, uh, I mean, heck, as Christians, right? For all of us who love visual aids, but especially as teachers, that is such a wonderful uh, uh, just picture. So have you ever been in, um, have you ever been in a place, and I know you have probably, mm-hmm. where you've been in, I was in a dark cave and there was no light, there was the absence yeah, yeah. of light, mm-hmm. it was like the most dark thing in the world, yeah. and the smallest of light brought so much light, right. the teeniest, tiniest of light. Well, it, this is the antithesis of that. He says, he says it, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. It's just pure light. Right. It's the image of no darkness, none, not even a, sm- a smidge. And you think, wow, that is what it's like to be sinless, apparently, right? It's just this image of light. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think it's great. Yep. Yeah. And, and by the way, uh, side note, uh, did you know that in heaven that God is the source of light? There is no sun. Yeah, there is yeah. no sun. That's right. So God is the source of light. Yeah. God sits on his throne. There's a full rainbow that goes around the throne of God. And God is the source of light in heaven is what we're told. That's right. Uh, which is cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the other interesting thing is light is a thing. Light is something. Light has substance. Mm. Light is energy. And darkness is not a thing, Mm. right? It is nothing. And so darkness cannot exist in the presence of light, just as sin cannot exist in the presence of God, Mm. right? Those two things uh, go together. So, yeah, I I, I love this whole thing. And he says, by the way, that this message is the message we heard from Jesus, right? So Jesus taught him this idea. He's not just making up the idea that God is light. There's light and dark and God is the author of light. and Darkness can't be around him. Um, he's saying, this is what Jesus taught us. I think he, what he's doing is he's kind of, cause this is a really short book. It's not a very long book. Right. He's summarizing the key element of Jesus teaching is what he's trying to do. And he starts right off that way. So then that's why, you know, light represents purity. Light represents holiness. Light represents truth. Light represents clarity. Light represents energy and darkness represents evil and sin and wrong and destruction, right? And then he pivots out of light and dark conversation into, so then be people of light who obey Jesus. So quit saying you're a follower of Jesus and walking in the light if you're always walking in darkness, Yeah. right? And by the way, 
theolo- th- these are some pretty <laughs> theologically heavy concepts. Oh, they're great. He says, but if we are living in the light as God is in the light, and I know you're thinking of that song, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to be in, in the, the light. light. Yeah. And, and it says, as, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. There's my favorite word, fellowship. And then he says, and the blood of his son, uh, of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's right. So it's it's interesting because we have a sin nature and we none of us are perfect. But at the same time, uh, Jesus, Jesus's death has the ability to remove all of our sins. So even as even as we are imperfect, uh, just know that the sacrifice of Jesus is so strong, just just like just like, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, sins would literally transfer to an animal. Right. Right. And in the book of Leviticus, we talked about that's the purpose of uh, of a sacrifice. Uh, the book of Hebrews says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And so that animal would literally take on the sins. It was a temporary thing, but then, then it would be offered as a sacrifice. Well, the sacrifice of Jesus is Jesus literally became our sin, and that sacrifice was enough to take care of all of our sins. Yeah. So when it says he cleanses us from all our sin, it doesn't mean we're perfect. Right. It doesn't mean we can strive every single day to live as perfect people. And by the way, in Atlanta, there's actually a church right off of I-75 called the Perfect Church. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The Perfect Church. Well, then I can't ever go there. I was just going to say, like, it's the it's the opposite of we'll any it. great title that I've yep. ever heard. Yep. Anyway, the, the I can't believe I did Somebody's that. Somebody's calling you. I can't believe I did that. Mm-hmm. So sorry about so that. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, that's right. Nobody's <laughs> perfect. Actually, I wish I could get that, but, I, but I'm not going to. I almost yeah. did for a second. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, all that to say, it's a theological uh, thing to understand that we have sin in our in, in our nature yeah. and that we're not perfect people. But at the same time, our sin is forgiven by God because we agree with God that sin is bad. We agree yeah. that. You know, we, 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 we turn from our sin. Yeah, so he brackets, you know, verse nine, if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He brackets it with, if we claim that we have no sin, we're fooling ourselves. We're not living in the truth. And then the other, if we claim we've not sinned, we're calling God a liar. So we have to be honest about ourselves. And that is we are sinners. But then his expectation is I'm writing to you, my children, this so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the father. So if we, he said, I'm writing this to you, stop sinning. And that's a reasonable expectation from our spiritual leaders, from our spiritual mentors to encourage us, stop, stop sinning. If you do, and you will, you're going to trip up. You're going to sin. You do have an advocate. Jesus will go before you. But the real nature of repentance, and I think this is one of the things he's challenging us to, repentance is twofold. Uh, there, there's grief about our sin and it's a willingness to turn away from it. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes it's tempting to go, well, I've been forgiven my sin. I'm just going to keep going in it instead of turning from it. So I think this is the, really what he's highlighting here is, man, if you say you love Jesus, then don't keep doing the things he hates. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it, the, the thing that killed him, quit dabbling at that. Right. And, and so there should be a certain amount of grief over our sin when we do sin a desire to change our direction, and there should be a tension, quite honestly, between uh, the fact that our flesh wants to do wrong, but we want to honor Jesus. And then hopefully as we mature and as we grow, remember, he's an old man at this point, um, hopefully as we mature and we grow, more and more and more we'll be frustrated by the sin and we'll desire more and more to honor Jesus, mm. right? Yeah. So, so live in that tension. Don't just <clears throat> let yourself off the hook with it, um, but understand we do have an advocate who's the best lawyer in the, in, in the universe to, to resolve this. Hey father, I've already paid for this sin. Right. Yeah. And by the way, it's, it's, it's a great measuring stick. It's a visual aid measuring stick to say, like, if I'm, if I'm constantly sinning, uh, and I'm, and I've had, I have this lifestyle of just doing what's wrong and I'm embracing all these wicked things and everything else. And if I think of myself as like, you know, I go to church and I uh, sit next to somebody who we believe is a really godly person and we think, yeah, we're the same. John is saying, no, you're not the same, right? Like, because you're in darkness. Right. They're trying really hard to be in the light. Right. Right. And and you're not really quite in fellowship with one another. You think you are. Right. But, but you're not in but, fellowship. Yeah, you're not in fellowship. So stop fooling yourself. Yeah. And I think that that's just a really great litmus test yeah. for us. And um, and by the way, uh, I think I've told this before a long time ago on this podcast, like a year and a half ago, but when we first started. But First John 1.9 was... 
uh, the first verse yeah, ever quoted yeah, to yeah. me yeah, yeah. by my wife, who at the time yeah. was just a friend. Uh, I, w- I think I was 14 and uh, she was 16, by the way. And uh, anyway, she uh, I was I was upset and I didn't know how God worked. And she wrote me this like four page letter. And at the end, she quoted me a verse and mm-hmm. and uh, and it was first John one nine. And she told me that confess confess means literally I don't have to get on my knees and make sure I confess every sin like a list. Confess means to simply agree with God. Uh, that's what the word confess means to right, agree. Right. And uh, and by the way, um, uh, I remember actually asking her this question when I saw her in person. I said, "How did you know where to find that verse? <laughs> and how did you know like that verse applied to me?" It was the first time I realized right. that a verse can apply to a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, uh, is another movie quote from Footloose. Remember when um, he was I never about saw to Footloose? What? I know. Oh, crazy, bro. I know. I know. You were here, and now yeah. you are here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Footloose, uh, yeah. there's, a, there's a scene. I, I, I know the idea of Footloose, but I've never watched it. Well, there's a scene where he's about to go into like this courtroom mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and he's arguing that, you know, dancing should be allowed. And uh, the preacher's daughter gave him ammunition from the Bible that said David danced. Oh, uh-huh. And she gave it to him and he goes, where did you know where to find this? And she looked at him and she goes, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so this, this yeah. gr- it turns out if you read it, you know what it is, <laughs> right. right? So that helps. So it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that the the real, the hinge of all that we've been saying to this point, and it's funny how, you know, the author sometimes can make more sense than we can. We say a lot more extra words, but he says, um, now I lost it. Oh, uh, verse five of chapter two, but those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. Mm-hmm. And this is how we know we're living in him. So our motivation yeah. Well, to, Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. That's right. Our motivation to stop sinning is not to go to heaven. That's what our advocate Jesus is for. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it, that's what he's faithful and just to do is to forgive us and to cleanse us when we confess. So instead, our motivation is it's the way that we show God we love him. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's a maturity to that. You know, when you're first born, uh, even, you know, when you're two years old, three years old, life is all about you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and thank goodness mom is there to provide for me. The other day, uh, our grandson, uh, my, my daughter said to my grandson, Hey, you need to pick that up. And he said, he calls my wife, Jimmy. And, uh, she said, Hey, you need to pick that up. And he says, Oh, don't worry about it. Jimmy will get it. Right. Wow. The, the, <laughs> wow. The whole world revolves around him right now. So, right. Jimmy, you know, his grandmother's there for him. It's mm-hmm. for my benefit. But there comes a time when you start to realize what love is and that you want to please your mom or you want to please your grandmother, you want to please the people that you love, right? And it shifts, it stops being about you. And that begins to be a little bit more mature than you used to be. You're a baby when you think it's all about you. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, so if your motivation to do right is so you can get into heaven, that's number one, that's a wrong idea. It's a baby self-centered mindset. But when you start to grow up spiritually, you start to realize, oh, wait a minute. The way I live my life can be a way for me to say, I love you, Jesus. That's fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. So now my motivation is totally different. It's not me-centered, it's Jesus-centered. And that is, I think, the essence of being a maturing Christian. Yeah. Well, you know, there's so many many benefits of, of doing what is right and obeying commandments. Because I've always said this before, because whenever God gives us a commandment or a piece of advice or an instruction, uh, it, it is not just because, you know, uh, he thinks it's just a good, happy thought. Yeah. It, it is because it is the best way. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So I've always said this phrase, it's for his glory always, but it's always for our benefit. Absolutely. And even if it's tough, even That's if a great it's, phrase. even if it's, uh, even if it's, um, you know, like doesn't make any sense, or even it's, it seems on, on the surface to be like it's suffering or painful, uh, and all of those things. When God asks us to do something, it's always for his glory, but it's always, always, always for our benefit. Man. And, and I think that, I think that, you know, the motivation isn't just, uh, I got to be holy because people are watching me. Uh, it's, it's no, I have to follow God, obey God because his way is the best way. It's mm-hmm. the right way. It's always going to benefit me. Right. And, and not only that, but I avoid so many things. Well, there you go. Uh, you know, so uh, anyway. Well, dude, that, that's a p- great place to end, right? Yes. So when you choose to do the right thing today. It's for his glory, but Mm -hmm. it's also for your benefit. Yep. Man, that was great. Thanks, man. That was really good. All right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow on The Bible Guys, hopefully. That is good.